Aristotle said that humans are the only species that last, and that babies don't have souls until they utter their first fear. I love that quote. It's a new, it just defines us as humans. Our ability to laugh and to understand humans distinguishes us from the rest of the animals on the planet. My name is Will Sanders, and I'm a human. I love to make people laugh, and that's my passion, and what I'm going to be talking about. To explore my passion in greater depth, yes, I took an eight-week course in stand-up shot that culminated into a four-minute performance at Gotham, one of the most famous comedy clubs in the world. If you pursue a passion, that's a little bit off the beaten path, like comedy, that's okay. I found that a microphone on a bare stage in a comedy club feels natural. It's like a round peg in a round hole. And once you find the place where you can explore your passion, you sometimes discover additional benefits of pursuing something truly meaningful to you. Take me for example. I am a class clown. I've been told that I am a, just a pain in the back of the class. And I did say class, that's C L A S S. So this year I've transformed from there to performing my passion live on stages for real audiences. Now, there's a difference between being a comedian and being funny. Anyone can memorize a line from an SNL skit and make their friends laugh, but the full benefits can only be realized when you take that extra step and get serious about being funny. Now, we'll watch a short comedy routine I wrote months ago before I'd done any research or taken any lessons. These are jokes that I either made up or stole from other comedians, and while looking back at it now, they're really not funny. I was young. That's about all that's funny. Here it is. Hi, my name is Will Sandier, and here are my jokes. Right now, third and third graders crying because they broke up with their boys. When I was in third grade, I cried because I missed Zoe 101 on Nickelodeon. Many people break up saying, it's not you, it's me. This is true, and part of a much larger statement. It's not you, it's me who's breaking up with you because I can't stand the sight of your face. People have said that to me. Ah. Another thing people dating do is fight just to get back together. See it all the times with celebrities. Call me cynical, I don't think that's what's happening in the Middle East. They could be fine if they just bonded over games like charades. Fun fact, playing charades is fun, but it's the most dangerous place to have a heart attack. Speaking of acting, let's talk about Donald Trump, the Republican's joke. He said several wives and bankruptcies. Perfect Republican candidate. I'm a very confused person, still am if you ever see me in math class. But when I was younger at weddings, the old people in the audience would poke me and say, you're next. No idea what that meant, but I wanted to return the favor, so I said it to them at funerals. A couple hard tasks later, my predictions came true. Writing these jokes was a hard job, but I smiled through it all. If I smile any other time, it means I have someone in mind to blame because I've gotten in trouble in a past time. Thank you. So fast forward four months, 12 Fridays, and 12 7 Lebanon later. I'm better at my craft, plus I learned three big things. That a sense of humor can be good for your health, good for your finances, and finally, good for your social life. Comedy is a skill that is actually good for your health. The New England Journal of Medicine did a study that showed a statistically significant correlation between laughter and the speed of recovery after an operation. Comedy also helps me to maintain a positive attitude, which has also been linked to better health and is especially useful in a desperate situation like mine. See, I have four sisters, so my home is just full of exercise, which can create a high-stress environment. And since I can only spend so many hours in the basement, I learned to use humor to refuse the occasional stress. And stress, as the medical study at Duke University made clear, is a killer. Humor, as a psychological process of discovery, has other benefits as well. Explaining why we commonly laugh during tragic events. Some people laugh at funerals, or car crashes, or when a kid forgets his lines when he's giving a speech on stage. This is... This is just because we are conflicted on how else to respond. When soldiers at the youth of Flash test site were ordered to bunker down and report their experiences after being hit by nuclear blast, nuclear blast in the 1950s, their first reactions weren't screams or crying, it was laughter. Even though people laugh at different times and for different reasons, it may seem super random. Ha 
come these books together in an amazing way to plus equation. And I utilize this equation to make people laugh in a calculated manner. Some can be financially rewarding too. The Forbes magazine, the Forbes magazine did a study that showed older workers saying that humor is dangerous in the office. It too easily offends. However, researchers and companies alike are now beginning to take a less pessimistic view of the individual and company-wide benefits of a related workday. In fact, the Forbes study concluded that business consultants sound more knowledgeable when they are able to squeeze in a related workday. Perhaps this is because they are feeling the client's left side of the brain, or in this area, which is typically where feelings of trust are So if you're looking to get ahead professionally, maybe getting funnier is one of the ways of doing it. The kissing comedy class I attended has given me more confidence. I stand up in front of strangers for two hours each week and work on my material. I get used to reading the reactions of the listeners, trying different voices, facial expressions, everything. And the skills I get from comedy make me feel better when I'm out and about trying to make connections with others. In fact, laughter is a factor in reading, matching, and dating. Of 3,745 ads placed in eight pages, from the Baltimore Sun to the San Diego Union Tribune, females were 62% more likely to mention laughter in their ads, and women were more likely to seek out a sense of humor, while men were more likely to offer it. Clearly, it seems, women seek men who make them laugh, and men are eager to comply with this request. That's good for me, at this point in my life, because it's like head friends reminded me repeatedly, I have absolutely nothing else to offer. Comedy is an incredibly helpful skill that can help you achieve all of your goals. You laugh between 15 to 20 times a day, regardless of the mood we're in when we wake up or what has happened throughout that time. This surprises me because most people wouldn't guess we laugh that much daily. We don't need to realize what comedy does for us, but it's always there, waiting to improve lives, and not just your own. So whatever your passion is, weird, bland, dangerous, follow it, and if you really do, it'll benefit you. Comedy is an incredibly helpful skill. Whether you want to live to be a hundred, impress co-workers, or make some new friends, comedy will help you achieve all of it. Now we'll watch a short comedy routine I wrote months ago before I had done... Now we'll watch the comedy routine I recently wrote at the Gotham City Comedy Club. <laughs> These are my... B or C list jokes, Mr. Wallace censored all my good ones, so if you want to hear them, just ask outside of the school. Okay. So here. <laughs> FedEx has been difficult this year. The memorizing, the research, not to mention all the eating. <laughs> no, I actually must have gained 16 pounds since we began FedEx. Between the 7 Eleven and Starbucks, it's just really unhealthy. The funny thing is, I came in hating Starbucks. One of the most difficult parts of that was learning to enjoy it, you know? It really helped my digestion system. No, but I was totally prepared for the rigors of TEDx. See, I had a rough start in life. I was a survivor of a full-day kindergarten. Now, most of you would think full-day kindergarten is not that bad, you know? But my experience was a little different. There are three reasons why. One, it was a Catholic school. No. Two, my mom told the nuns to hit me. <laughs> Three, there were nuns. That was pretty bad. But nowadays, there's a certain group in town frantic to jam kids into school for another three hours at six years old. I say, why torture the poor kids? Don't put me on record for saying any of this, just in case I want to be on the school board. Can you believe it? And I think the park testing we started in September is coming to close this week. No, we have a lot to be thankful for. You know, if we had taken the full park test, we'd all be coming back for summer school, so that's a bonus. 
And now that park is over, we can start learning real things, like how to watch a movie in mid-June. I think that's Mr. Sherman's new lesson plan. No, but we do have a lot to be thankful for here at Law and C. Johnson Summit Middle School. I'm not thankful for the name. It's too long. Printing that on everything probably boosted the school budget. It's annoying. And why do we need the Summit Middle School part at the end? Is there another Law and C. Johnson school? I, just, I don't understand that. No, but another thing to be thankful for is the chicken recall in the cafeteria. If you didn't hear about that, due to foreign objects, we don't have popcorn chicken anymore. Yeah. I loved the chicken, which isn't good for me, but because of the Starbucks, my digestive system could have handled the foreign objects. So I'm ready there. Yeah. And above all else, I'm thankful for the audience for being so awesome through all of our talks. So thank you for that, and good night. Ah! <laughs>